DayZ is a dynamic game. Along the way you're going to meet all sorts of different people in all sorts of situations. Some will be bad, friend, and friend, friend, and some will be good. Oh, we're you. friendly. Oh, Daisy is a game in which there are guns and no rules. So people who complain about deathmatching have failed to realise the underlying principle. Friend. When you put yourself in a vulnerable position, friend, friend. you're going to be exploited. In order to avoid dying in this manner, and as well as experiencing rich player encounters, we need to identify the aspects of player encounters and analyse them. Trying to understand and predict the full spectrum of human behaviour would be quite impossible, so I've narrowed it down to three key points for this guide. The first topic is reconnaissance. 203 stuff on it, it's hacked in. It's an M16 hollow with M203. There. The second topic is approaching the person or party and the correct way to do so. The third and final topic is monitoring your group and looking for signs of potential betrayal. Hang on, I hear them shooting. Let's not talk about anything except the action. As well as identifying the fundamental aspects of player encounters, this video is going to teach you many different tips and tricks to ensure your survival in the context of player interaction. Now we're going to look at all three parts in their separate detail. Part 1. Reconnaissance. Considering goals and finding players. Before we start our physical reconnaissance, we need to start our mental reconnaissance. We need to set goals. The first one we want to set is what do I want? Do I want loot? Do I want to have fun? Do I want to meet people? It's anything. And the second one is how do I get it? And where do I go? What do I need? Am I geared up? What's my context? And where's my current location? There are two ways in which a player encounter happens. The first is somebody approaches you, a person or a party, and then the opposite, if you approach a person or a party. And both situations call for a completely different response. Let's have a look at both of those now. A sudden encounter is what happens when reconnaissance fails. Ah, oh, sweet fight! Yeah! Ring the bell, ring the bell! I got fucked up! I'll help you, I'll help you, don't kill me, no one here. Let's take that back and have a look at what I did. A sudden encounter requires an immediate response. I see a player coming for me at high speed on a bike. I know that this is a road, so he's probably just a traveller, but I don't know if he's friendly or not. Knowing that I am invulnerable to him right now, seeing that he's on the bike, I communicate my intention to him. I then see that he's crashed. Instead of running towards him, because he's armed and I don't know his intention, I run to the side of him using the car as a shield and keep talking to him, relaying my intention. Given that he hasn't immediately shot at me, we try to work together and I'm constantly just relaying information to him. I am keeping my distance and keeping an eye on him. And a sudden response requires you to pay constant attention. As soon as he starts shooting, you're going to see him crouch down on one knee crouch down rather, to try to avoid the gunfire. Now he didn't shoot me there, the zombies just knocked me out, and he does try to get to me. So that was a sudden encounter with a friendly. What about a hostile? Hey dude, follow me. I got guns for you. I'm not gonna shoot you man. Here, come in the church. Take all my stuff. Let's take that back for now. Hey dude, follow me. This is where a lot of people go wrong. Calling out friendly isn't good enough. You can't rely on a person's goodwill to not shoot you. Instead of running directly towards him, I tried to quarter away from him at an angle, running diagonally away from him. If I ran straight towards him, he probably would have landed those first few shots. And you can see when I run into the church when I'm running in a straight line, I get shot in the back because it's an easier target to hit when someone is coming straight towards you or going straight away from you. The shooting's not necessary. Now you're gonna die. Dude, he's such a fucking idiot. Oh! I said take my stuff, you retard. Oh crap. You friendly? Yep, yeah, I put away 
fire the axe. Alright, mate, come with me. I managed to kill someone. Yeah. Like I reckon. That's a good I'm not sure. I, I didn't even check it. Put the gun down. Yep. Don't look at me. Sorry, I thought it killed me. Uh, negative. Don't touch the guy with the AK. Right. The guy with the pistol should be alright until he's gone. Can I pick up the 911? If you point it at me, all I'll right. put a hole in your head. Alright. A sudden encounter is going to require a decisive response. You need to immediately decide if you're going to be friendly or hostile. Indecision will ultimately lead to your death. A sudden encounter is the least preferable way to meet another player. It's wrought with danger and there's many variables that you can't control. What we want to do is try to maximize our reconnaissance. The three main aspects of good reconnaissance are context, sensors and memory. Context refers to your server and where you are in the game and the level of violence you can expect. Sensors refers to your physical senses doing the actual looking and the reconnaissance, and memory ties it all together. Consider my context now. I'm in Cherno. It's a fairly violent place, and there's lots of gunfire that I can hear using my senses. But when I use my memory and draw an experience, I realize that there's only two guns that are making all this noise, and I've been following them for 15 minutes, and no death messages have been popping up. It means nobody's dying. Even though I'm in this violent town and can expect gunfire, nobody's dying. So let me get closer to the source. Friend, friend. Oh, no. We're you. friendly. Oh, okay. oh, sweet. I can hear the zombie attacking upstairs, but there's dead zombies. It means that their gunfire has just been directed at zombies. Probably means that they're more inclined to be friendly. I go up the stairs, and now I'm using the lessons that I learnt from my sudden encounter. I've come across somebody here, I've made a decision to be friendly, I try to get out of his line of sight when he does something funky, and then I try to get into a good position. And then there's the other guy, a shotgun and a Leanfield, two friendlies. Everything that I thought was confirmed. And I highly recommend that you check out the Helicopter Cherno video in the YouTube channel to see that full adventure. It was pretty fun. So that was a friendly recon, but what about a hostile one? Let's have a look at the context. There's lots of player death messages and side chat. I'm in Electro. It's a pretty dangerous place. Sucked in, dickhead. <laughs> that carnage is what my senses just caught. Using my senses and memory, I now know that there's two people. There's the person with the AKM upstairs, and now there's this newcomer with Italy Anfield. Oh. Don't shoot. Those two players just had it out. And I could jump straight to the killing there, because all of my recon told me one thing that I would die if I tried to contact these players. <laughs> to summarize recon, you first need to consider your wants and what you want to do in this day Z session and how do you get it. And then there's two types of encounters. The first where recon fails in a sudden encounter and the second is proper reconnaissance, which tells you if a player is good or bad. The second part of player encounters is approaching the person or the party. The only incorrect way to approach other people is to do so leaving yourself completely vulnerable and naked to their attack. Friend, are you friend? In that situation, I had no leverage and I was caught off guard. But in this one, I charged straight up to this person, but I do have leverage. He's being chased so I decide to run over and assist him. Hello, I'm friendly. I'm 
friend raised the line, I'm gonna shoot you. If you don't shoot me. Leverage depends on context and your own ability to innovate. Okay. The context here is we're both wounded, but I outgun this person. I'm oh, okay. Thanks. And he's also a new player. Okay. Do you, wait, do, do you have a map? Sorry, can you start again? I told him if he wanted the map and a transvision, he'd have to sit down. This is both a way to approach the situation as well as controlling it, which will tie in with point three. The final consideration for approaching a person or party is your actual physical approach. Gotcha, bud, hang on. Here's somebody being viciously mauled by a group of zombies. If it wasn't for me, he would have died. I patch up his wounds, I transfuse him, I heal him with morphine, and I tell him and try to comfort him that I'm going to go to the hospital and grab an EpiPen to wake him up. Hold here bud, I'll grab an EpiPen. If somebody just did for me what I just did for that player, I'd feel indebted to them and I'd probably follow them around as a loyal bodyguard until I died. But that's me. That's what I do. I don't know anything about this player. So here's the most important consideration for your physical approach is remaining behind cover. And that's all there is to it. Good friend, friend. Yeah. yeah, right. Seeing that he woke up naturally, I head straight for the nearest cover, knowing nothing about this player, behind a doorway I can't even get into, and then down this alleyway. Cover is contextual. It changes. I can't tell you how to take cover. You just have yeah, to figure it I'm out good. as it changes. Good man. Whew. You saved my life. No worries. And here's a video demonstrating all the principles so far. There's a player inside that I heard moving around, so I use my recon and sneak up on him. I spot the player. Now I'm figuring out how to approach him. Hey buddy. I still don't know if he's actually hostile. Hey buddy, run him from the zombies. So I observe. Then he sees me. If you wanted to know to what depths of paranoia I'd go to survive, just have a look at this. Whenever he comes close to me, I just run off. He sounds slightly unhinged and a bit weird. He keeps following me around and wanting me to have a look at his CZ. Makes me a bit nervous. But it also, my running around also has a negative effect. It makes him feel slightly unhinged about what my intentions are. Right, see that building on his right there? Yeah. behind that building where the other one? Is he dead? Yeah, there's a guy. That... See the dead zombie? Yeah, that wasn't me. Yeah, that's another guy. Ultimately, a good approach brought me enough time so I could have a conversation with this person. And now we're standing closer and closer together. I actually run off here, but we met up later anyway. You should check that out in my five-person team-up video. To summarize our three approach points, you must consider if you are naked to another player. You are naked if you don't have any leverage. You have leverage if you have skills, if you have firearms, and anything that's contextual that will give you an advantage over the player. You must also have physical safety. If you have neither physical safety or leverage, you're just going to die when you make an approach to a person. Part 3 is all the gory and good stuff that causes so much grief. It is group dynamics and looking out for signs of betrayal in a group or another player. I'm not going to spend long about the dynamics of controlling a group. Leaders emerge naturally, either a strong one, by consensus, a balance of power, or a dictator. If you think betrayal is impossible to detect, you are absolutely wrong. Betrayals follow many similar characteristics through the many videos I've analysed, as well as my own. The problem is, it's so hard to quantify if your assumptions are correct. If you leave your group, you'll survive, and you won't be dead, so you'll have no hard data on if you made the right decision. You'll, it will only be measured by the fact that you're still alive, which at the end of the day is what you want to be. If you are paying close attention to the montage, you will notice some trends emerging in the behaviour of the betrayers. The four signs of the imminent betrayal 
this constant aiming down the sights, being at point-blank range, being at the peripheral of the group of the person, and always sticking close to the person that they first betray. I theorise that they like to aim down the sights because betraying people is a risky, nerve-wracking business and they want to be true in their aim. It's at point-blank range because that gives more certainty to the shot and I've never seen a betrayal over range, as well as tending to the peripheral of vision so you're more out of sight and always sticking close to the target. We're going to have a look at one of the best examples of me being betrayed. I have had so many encounters with people that killed me. Dude, I saw the, the dude that just climbed up the ladder you killed was a bleeding dude with a double barrel shot. So, whatever. Anyway, there's no way up, so. I killed somebody when they knocked me. Well, uh, I'm leaving because I can't get it in, so if you want to try killing him, good luck. He's trying to shot by a The letter of him. To fill you in with a backstory, I climbed off the ladder, but there was a corpse and a person hiding there. This guy then logged in, scared the crap out of me, then I talked him down and he was friendly. So now we were debating whether to try to kill the guy up on the roof. Now let's look out for these signs. Nothing too fishy just yet, but he's constantly following me around. I don't really know him, we're not friends. Then I tell him I'm leaving, and look how he twitched. He twitched his aim up to me when I said I'm leaving. I'm in front of him, I'm actually trying to hide now. And then he says there's a ladder that he's going to show me. I'm in the room and I know there's no ladder, so I know it's coming. And it's still pretty brutal anyway. Before we get to the signs of the imminent betrayal, we want to try to consider their behaviour and what they're doing and what they're saying. Here I am trying to outweigh a sniper and electro. Fairly innocent enough. Dude, friendly, friendly, friendly coming behind you, hero, fellow hero. And now I've bumped Shooting into another hero. Hey man, friend. There was a sniper on the roof, I just took him out. Turns out that I killed his friend. So I said to him I'd return all of the gear in good faith. And we've been hanging around each other for about 10 minutes while we're waiting for his friend to get back. Now the sus stuff begins and I know my time's up. See the way he was clinging to me like a sponge? There's no reason for him to be following me around so neurotically. Look out to my right, he's right there, waiting for me at the door trying to line me up. So I back up a little against the wall, nowhere to go between the zombies and him. You killed my friend mate, you did not do that. So how do we survive being betrayed then? And two rules which are never going to break from now until forever is never loot around strangers and never turn your back on strangers. Always keep your eye on them and never be vulnerable. Just go out and have a look at the still photos again. See how many people were killed while they were looting or had their back turned. Do you need anything? Like, I, I have a spare pistol. No, I'm sweet. I just roll like this. Um, do you have spare blood? Can you blood me? Yep, yep, sure. Now you can see that he's hesitating before jumping in, but as soon as I sit down, he's happy to come in. So you should do the same to other people. Am I completely vulnerable in this position? Yes. But you have to give in order to get. And as soon as I can control something again, I do. As I'm running away, I look over my shoulder for information. No he could still betray me. I don't know him. He could have fun in healing me up and then breaking my leg as I run away. You never know. Keep an eye on him. Control what you can. A sure way to avoid betrayal is to overtly or covertly coerce people into doing what you want them to do. It isn't a very good goal for the long term, and it doesn't work well in group situations, but you will survive immediate betrayal. Ah, uh, yeah, I can. And this example is the creme de la creme of everything we've learnt. This is me slipping away from a fairly imminent betrayal, or one that I suspect. 
Nicely spotted. <laughs> Man, I tell you, my eyes talk about good peepers. I'm travelling with two people and I've been the leader. We just happened to coincidentally bump into a few of one of the other person's friends. You can see that his other two friends aren't speaking. They're aiming down the sights and they're talking over another different voice over IP. The situation is going downhill pretty quickly. I'm no longer in control as the leader. The friends are talking amongst themselves and my teammate here is leaving. Are they leaving us? No, I don't. Come here, come here, I'll give you one. Yeah. I'm Using his body is somewhat of a shield between yeah. us. I put the morphine into his bag. I do want to help him out, because he's who I respected most out of the two. And he's off on his way. Now I'm going to look for a subtle exit. Yeah, he's with us now. Yeah, I can follow you around. Notice I'm being very passive. I'm hiding behind the tree, but my weapon isn't pointed. I'm open to their suggestions, and I'm not asserting uh, any leadership to? whatsoever. I try to oh, subtly jive them to get them to move somewhere. That's only to pres provoke some movement, so I can cover my own. What have you got? You got an AK, do you? Uh, I just have... Yeah, I have an AK. What do you have, Carl? Yeah, I gotta get out of here. These kids are on Skype. They're gonna murder me. I know sure. it's a lot to take in, but human beings are really complicated, and I could have made this five times as big. So, a quick recap on our three main points. Number one, reconnaissance. Are you in a sudden encounter or a planned encounter? And a planned encounter is always preferable to a sudden encounter. The second consideration is your approach and how to do it in safety. And the third is monitoring signs of betrayal and monitoring your group. Now how do I know these kids were going to be betraying me? Well I don't really know, do I? As to what that shotgun was actually aiming at, I'll never know. But I survived, and I hope you learned something too. So thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed it.